I am going to invoke my editor's privilege and replace this keynote speech with Molly's. <laughs> that was fantastic. Um, yes, I am a proud graduate of the City College of New York. And it is such a huge honor to be here this morning that it is almost indescribable. It was almost 40 years ago, I know there was somebody who left, who was leaving with you, and somebody who was here five years ago, and somebody who was 20 years ago, well, it was 40 years ago, <laughs> almost, where I sat where you sat, where you sit today. And I can't tell you how proud I am to be a part of this day. I was 22, I had a job, I was hopeful, which is what happens if you are 22 and have a job in journalism. <laughs> You get to be, I mean, that is the very definition of hopeful. But there were a lot of questions, which I suspect you have some of today. And there was a lot of anxiety because it's journalism. Um, the job market was probably a little better, but it's the same. It's the same idea. What am I doing? So deep in my soul, I know what a big deal this is for you today. And thank you for allowing me to be part of it. So the first thing I want to say is, to the class of 2022, congratulations. You've done it. Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> and while today is a great celebration of your triumphs, and we will talk a lot about that, we should also acknowledge but this is also a huge moment for all the people who care about you and love you, who stand behind you. So here I get to say to the parents and the professors and the spouses and the significant others, the grandparents, the family friends, the work colleagues, all the people who brought you up to this moment, the people deeply invested in you and your happiness, Congratulations to you as well. This is connected to my having gotten out of City College, like I said, almost four decades ago. But in really significant ways, you will not understand that you are not just a reflection of those people. That in some ways, you've actually become them. You've enlarged us. You, have, you are our dreams come true. And so as we celebrate, accept our thanks for living out your dreams and ours. Because this next turn is going to be interesting. <laughs> Whoever said, may you live in interesting times and meant it as a curse, was not a journalist. You, the class of 2022, have chosen interesting work in interesting times. And that is a blessing. That is a mitzvah, maybe a double mitzvah. But to quote Joan Didion, and to date myself as a child of the 80s, we tell ourselves stories in order to live. The words may be dated, a little cliched even, but the truth of them are timeless. The stories we tell define who we are. And you have an obligation to tell your story and the story of your time in the most compelling and comprehensive way that you can figure out how to do. And it sounds like you've had a lot of work uh, in that direction. And that's not tr just true for people. It's not just true for you and for me and for Didion. It's true for communities. It's true for cultures. And you are the next great set of storytellers. The work you've chosen relies on truth and trust and the basic idea that we are all connected, that we share some common interests, some common humanity, some universal story. The world these days does not feel that sentiment, we must acknowledge. And I tell you nothing you don't know when I say these are harsh and divisive times. 
And many, maybe even most newsrooms reflect those harsh realities. But they are also the place, as you've discovered during your time at J School, where you will find the people who you will work with and live with and be friends with forever. Do not at any moment ever take that for granted. When you find your people, hang on to them. They will get you through. Because these newsrooms, I think even more than before, can be harsh places. Hard to find yourself, hard to figure out what you're worth, hard to find your purpose. But when you find your people, and if you find that purpose, it makes it a lot easier every day to get up and go do the work. I like to say I became a journalist by accident, not by mistake, but by accident, because there was no plan. I finished high school in Trinidad and Tobago, where I grew up. I moved to the Bronx, where my mother had been living for 10 years before that. At City College, I was an engineering major, because which immigrant kid in the 80s was not? <laughs> all my cousins, close friends, families, engineering, pre-med, they're all doctors and engineers now. I wanted to be a biomedical engineer. There was something exotic about that. But there was this 300 level organic chemistry course that had completely <laughs> different ideas for me. I just failed that class, straight up, I think, straight up failed because I didn't withdraw and I didn't drop it. <laughs> so I have, this, uh, I have this fortune on my desk at NPR. What can you get out of a cookie? It says, failure is feedback. Well, the feedback from Organic Chem was, you are no engineer. <laughs> but my fallback was equally obvious. It was going to be English. It was going to be journalism. I had been, I had been briefly a reporter on the college newspaper, the campus, which uh, had a great history. Um, but how I ended up with the newspaper is kind of the accident. I was looking for the radio station because I wanted to like go on the radio and tell stories and sign off with uh, great sign offs. You know, I, could, I had this thing I would do all the time and say, Terrence Samuel, CBS News, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. <laughs> Alabama being one of the 11 states I've never been to <laughs> to this day. So I'm in the student union at City College and I poke my head in because I can't find a radio station because I'm looking for help. This office happens to be the campus newspaper. An hour later, I leave with two assignments. <laughs> um, one of them about the new prices at the cafeteria <laughs> and how all the students who couldn't afford it were getting really royally screwed, can I say? by the administration. Um, yeah, so we yelled at trustees even back then. <laughs> um, after, all these years later, after walking out of that office, I cannot imagine having done anything else. I got out of college, when I, worked, when I was in college, I worked at the New York Public Library at 42nd and 5th, the center of the world, as every New Yorker knows. I got out of college and I got a job at the Roanoke Times in far southwest Virginia, which felt like a different country. People ask me all the time, you know, was it a culture shock to move from Trinidad to New York? It's like, it's not like moving from New York to Roanoke, Virginia. <laughs> um, I stayed three and a half years. I, uh, while there, I covered the opening day of hunting season. I did a international double murder that took me up and down uh, the English countryside. And I covered a Klan rally. Great stories all, taught me more about myself than the people I wrote about. 
But there's one story, 35 years later, I think, that remains probably, if not the most important, one of the most important of my career. More important than covering Nelson Mandela, which I did, or Barack Obama, which I did, or Rudy Giuliani, or David Dinkins. More important even than running into Taylor Swift that she was coming out of the bathroom at NPR. <laughs> I was the night police reporter in Roanoke, and there was a call on the radio for a murder-suicide. I reported the story. I wrote it. It was in the paper. A few days later, I go to the funeral. As the story develops, it's a 75-year-old man who shoots his 90-something-year-old mother. I go to the funeral, and the family's black. I'm not sure if I even knew that before I got there. The result is, though, I am not as intrusive a person at this story as, a, I'm usually, as I usually am. This is how diversity works in real life. At the funeral, I hear one of the relatives say this from the pulpit. She says, I know a lot of you think that this is a tragedy, but it's really a love story. And I go, I have to talk to her. She has a story to tell. And as we know, we tell ourselves stories in order to live. I get invited back to the house. I eat lunch with the family. I ask for pictures. I write the story, it's on the front page, I feel good about it. A few weeks later, I return the, uh, I return the photograph. The story is this, the dead son is, is the only caretaker for his mother. He gets cancer. He doesn't see a way for her to be taken care of if he's not there. He makes a horrible choice. I return the photograph and they thank me for the story. And then she says this. This was a really hard thing for us to talk about with our family and our friends. But we send them your story and then it was easier to explain. I don't know that I've, I certainly up until then, ever felt more useful. And I've been chasing that feeling for like the last 40 years. So what have I learned in, in this time that might help you as you uh, try to navigate this brave new world? Well, one, be useful. Figure out how you will serve. Two, don't let anybody limit you. Do not limit yourself not by all the things that we know we have to deal with. Not racism, not anti-LGBT hate, not anti-Asian hate, not anti-Semitism, not white supremacy, not small-mindedness, not self-doubt, not cynicism, especially not cynicism. That's no fun. Develop your own standards. That's how you know you're doing good work or that you need to work on yourself. Develop your own standards. Believe in the people who believe in you. There will be critics and there will be boosters. We tend to pay more attention to the critics. Start with me. You can do anything, in part, because you were graduates of this amazing institution. There's a guy named Joe Plumeri who's from New Jersey and has gone from being kind of an executive to one of these self-help gurus telling you how to live. And he's got this phrase, go play in traffic, by which he means be serendipitous, get out in the world. So I talked about not having a plan earlier. I feel like you guys sitting here suggest that you do have a plan. <laughs> if you have one, be prepared to abandon it and go play in traffic. By which I mean, take chances, take risks, have fun, 
This work should be fun. Get in on the action. This is your world to change. So finally, let me say this to my new colleagues in the working press. Welcome, thank you, and congratulations. Thank you.